Microservos are small positioning actuators with a limited range of travel. Getting reliable actuation requires both a proper mounting and a proper coupling. Let's look first at the parts. Here's one of our microservos in the original bag and then the parts that are within it. So we have the body of the servo, uh, three so-called servo horns, a small tiny screw that is the retaining screw, and then a couple of mounting screws. So the output of the servo has what's called a spline shaft. There are grooves on the shaft which engage with grooves in the socket of the molded horn part. The main thing to note is the servo has a limited travel of about 180 degrees. And the horn can be installed on that, sha on that spline shaft at a discrete number of positions. So in order to get the right range of travel for your mechanism, you might need to drive to one limit and then uh, reposition the horn at whatever angle makes sense for your mechanism um, at that limit of travel. So it's not an infinitely variable adjustment, but there's a, a large number of small teeth, and you can choose which teeth are in engagement, um, which positions in engagement. Um, to get the horn on the servo. Once, once you have the horn in the right place, there's a small retaining screw that can be screwed into the, into the top of the, of the spline shaft there um, to get that uh, to lock into place permanently. So that gets the horn onto the, onto the shaft. But what about the body of the servo itself? The best way to mount these is to use the tabs. There's two small, uh, sharp-tipped, woodcutting screws or self-tapping screws that are included, which can fit into the small holes in the tabs. And the tabs are really the best bet for mounting into a structure. Let's take a, a look at what that might look like. So here's a mounting plate drawn. And the key features are there's a clearance hole for the servo itself. That's the large rectangular hole in the center. And two small holes placed, uh, in, assuming this is wood, in a place that the uh, sharp screws could self-tap into that uh, when the servo is installed. And altogether, that would look like the servo placed in the center and then some small screws placed into those tabs. Physically, the secret is having a wooden part uh, with enough clearance that the wiring can fit through it. So the wires have to be installed through the hole and then there has to be enough clearance so that the wires can, can uh, still fit through the hole as the servo settles into place. And then once it's in place, the small holes will line up and uh, the sharper screws uh, can be placed um, through the tab to locate into the holes uh, in the wooden part. If you're not using wood, you have to be more careful about the size of those holes, but it's still possible to use the same screws. Now, it is possible to mount these in a couple of other ways. I'm using the back side of the tabs. It's possible to do a front mounting where the tabs are on the back of the material. Um, I sometimes do see a designs where people clamp the body one way or another in almost all cases, that's more trouble and, and harder to adjust and harder to change. Um, it really is the tap mounting that's the recommended way of holding these into a mechanism. So that gets, that gets you the servo attached uh, into some kind of panel. It's a panel mount using the tabs. It's still the recommended way. Now, let's think a little bit about the, how to actually couple to this. So the servo horn has a variety of small holes. There's three different shapes here. And there's a, lot of, a variety of small holes which kind of hint that they can accept small wire, bits of wire that would connect out to the mechanism. The, the chief thing to note is that this is a plastic shaft. It doesn't support uh, side loads very well, and it doesn't support heavy weights. Um, the servo horn will bend. It's not designed to carry a load. What it's designed to do is to have, um, carry a pure torque caused by having some link that's pushing or pulling on the servo horn. And that's how we like to try to construct our mechanisms. I'm gonna show you an example of that uh, in CAD so we get a feel for how that might look. Here's a kind of candidate mechanism. It's notionally designed out of six millimeter plywood. It's not a particularly useful mechanism uh, and not every single part is shown, but it kind of at least schematically shows the typical layout. So here I have the servo kind of panel mounted into a side panel. And then there's a moving part uh, on, a, on a shoulder screw that is supported by a clevis supported by these two side plates. I'm gonna go ahead and hide one of the side plates so we can see better what's going on. So there is a four bar linkage formed here in which there is a wire link connecting the servo horn to the flag part. And so when the servo horn moves, the wire conveys a force to a point on the flag and it rotates around its pivot. So that wire link is not only flexible and uh, limited in the kind of side loading it can uh, produce, um, but it's sort of pivoting in the servo horn itself. So it forms a four bar linkage 
uh, formed by the section of the of the flag between the pivot and the first part of the wire, the wire link, the servo horn, and then the fourth stationary link is effectively the body of the servo in the ground. And that, that together forms a four bar linkage, which can both uh, transmit the motion of the of from the servo horn to the mechanism, as well as um, have some transmission ratio. Um, depending upon the relative lengths of the links, different uh, kinds of motions are possible. Um, and it can either amplify or reduce the motion of the servo into the output stage. The key primarily is that the loads are decoupled. The st sturdy shoulder screw can support any kind of loading of the bulk mass of the moving part and convey that to ground. And then the wire link allows just a single force to be coupled from the torque of the motor into the mechanism. And then off-axis torques are eliminated, other kinds of rotational torques are eliminated, and the servo horn experiences just the kind of pure rotational moment that it's designed for. And this, by having this parallel axis structure of having the axis of the motor parallel to the axis of rotation and using a, a linkage system, then the motor itself is protected and can have a uh, reliable long life. So those are the basic principles. One is panel mount your servos, use the tabs, use the screws provided. Second is uh, locate the mass on a separate pivot someplace. Don't use the pivot of the servo as the actual load bearing rotation pivot. And then use some kind of tie rod to connect the servo. In model airplanes where these are often used, those tie rods can be quite long. And in even cases, if you can guarantee it's strictly under tension and never under compression, it could be a piece of string or something else, a piece of wire that is entirely flexible if it's exerting only tension. But with these principles, you'll get a reliable kind of long life out of these little servos.